<laughs> Hello, everybody. It's nice to be back at Notes. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, first, I will probably, sh I should say something about myself. Uh, like you heard, my name is Michal Stefaniak. For English speakers who cannot pronounce H, I'm just Michael. <laughs> uh, I am a software developer and IT consultant, and I have more than 15 years of experiences. I'm also certified uh, Neo4j uh, professional. And I also received a Graphy Award for for uh, as a most valuable player in ecosystems. I received this award for my uh, PHP driver for communication with graph databases, and I am uh, very involved in the open source uh, development and communities. Like I said, uh, I received the award for the PHP driver, which is very popular. Uh, it's used by dozens of millions of users every day in many different implementations. So it's very popular and it's uh, optimized to be available for any version of the Bolt specification which was released in past. But uh, let me tell you something about the Cypher GUI and the background story, why I decided to create the Cypher GUI or GUI, <laughs> as uh, Sarah said. Uh, for, in first place, uh, graph, graph databases are databases. Many people think about the cool stuff like data science, uh, large language models, AI, and more these days. But first, and on, and first, it's primary a database. So for me, the Grow database is a great tool to use with projects. It's really something which is unchallenging in the way how to store the data and the drill and the connection between the data. So I built multiple projects already with the Neo4j database. And that's also one of the reasons why I saw there is a gap on the market in some administration tool. So for example, I have made uh, this production planner for glass workshop. Uh, they are manually creating glass products. So they needed some tool to plan the production ahead so they can know when the products will be done. And there was no similar tool for this specific industry. So with the graph database, I created the whole structure of data, how they are stored and um, estimated for the future. Then I created a application for uh, managing the employee rights as an internal system for one company. So anybody from the company who wants to receive some rights, like access to internet or new monitor or something else, they just put request here, uh, then it goes through approvers and the manager of the right and everything is uh, fluently implemented and it's using the graph database in the backend. So you can use the graph database as database and the additional value of data science or research or something can be the next step when you already have the data. So because I'm from PHP environment, not only from PHP, because I have experiences from uh, web development, software development, uh, industry, automatization, manufacturing, and more, and also game development. <laughs> uh, but one of my majors is the PHP. I'm very fond of this language, which really evolved in years. And because I came from this environment, I am mm, familiar with this tool. And there are many people who are familiar with this tool. It's a uh, administration for the MySQL. It was very simple. You can just uh, take the PHP file, copy the file to your hosting, and just run the website and access the database which was very comfortable because you don't have to install anything specific. You just copy a file and access the database. That was something what was what I was trying to achieve with my tool, Cypher GUI. The next, what was my inspiration? And 
also it's from the PHP environment or MySQL environment is the high SQL. I really like the way how they show the data. What was really cool feature I was not able to implement in Cypher GUI was to editing the cells uh, directly. You can just edit the row by clicking to cell and change the value. But what is really cool when you open multiple tabs, uh, different data, queries, and other stuff, and you close the ID and then you reopen it, everything is back. So you don't have to really save or anything. You just close and reopen. And that's what I wanted to have in the Cypher GUI because it's a really handy feature. So I knew these tools and I wanted to have something similar for the graph databases because I was working with the Neo4j like every day and I needed something simple, fast. And I know there is, uh, there is a Neo4j browser, which is a great tool for visualization of the data, but it has one disadvantage. You have to learn the Cypher query language, which can be a little bit problematic for people who wants to transition into this environment. And it's a bigger problem in big companies because if the developers decide to start using the graph database, they also have to inform some uh, administrators and other people who will be working with it. And many times you have these uh, database administrators which are in SQL, in a relational database for 20 years. And they are not too prone to change into something new, to learn something new. They are used to use the SQL, so now they have problem because somebody wants them to learn SQL. That can be obstacle on the way to transition into graph database. So this tool is great, but I really saw the problem with learning the SQL. And the other problem, when you have the da data stored in this uh, graph structure, it looks great for a presentation many times, uh, but if you want to change a property of some node, you cannot do that easily. You have to write the Cypher query and change the data with on the specific node with specific ID or something. You have to really know what you are doing. You cannot just click on the node and change the value which is problem for some people. And that means I had a list of what I want. I know I wanted some user-friendly interface, modern design, usable without SQL knowledge, or continue where you left off. And also I wanted to add the SQL console for advanced users, but also I wanted the application to be easy to deploy as the PHP my admin just copied some file. I want it to be single page app, not relying on any backend technology. That was one of my most important decisions because I didn't want to be limited to some uh, environments with Node.js, PHP, Apache or something else. I just wanted simple application which you can run, but you don't need to install or anything. And also I wanted to use the Bolt protocol uh, for people who doesn't know. Neo4j created a Bolt protocol specification. It's a protocol for communication with graph databases. Uh, it's uh, openly available. So anybody who wants to can implement this protocol. So there are other uh, graph databases which are using this protocol. So my tool is also usable with any database which use this protocol. And my target audience, as I said, was the de developers and administrators because I'm coming from this environment and I was seeing missing functionality in this environment. So I had, to, I did some analysis, I did some thinking and I always start with some uh, paper and pen or pencil. I'm old school, but it helps me to put together my thoughts. And I knew there are 
different kinds of databases. And what I wanted to achieve was to show or manage the data of graph database as a column family database or relational database. So that was a little bit tricky in first moment. So I took the uh, graph structure, and when I look, and when I was looking at it, I realized the node labels can be a table name, the relational relational relationship. Sorry, <laughs> uh, relationship type can be also table name, and the properties can be columns with the values. That makes sense. That sounds easy. So uh, with this approach, I created a tool which is called Cypher GUI, which looks like this. Uh, this is um, just login page, so, so nothing interesting. But after you log in, uh, we are connected to database with the movies uh, data set, which is available for import in uh, Neo4j. And when you connect, you immediately see some start page where you have all available labels and types. So you can click on these as a buttons. And if you go to all the labels, it's, it's like looking at all tables in relational database, which is interesting because in relational database, you cannot do that. You always have to look at some specific table. In this case, if the label is table, we can look at all tables or labels at once. So it's all in one table. And uh, I used some specific design for this. Every time when I'm showing a node or relationship, I have the edit button with the ID, which is the pen. Uh, I have delete button or I have the label buttons. So everything is clickable. If you want to change the node or you want to change or you want to show only that specific label, you can just click on what you see. So for example, if you click on specific node, you will see form, which will give you opportunity to change the properties, change the labels also to see the relationship and navigate through them because you can click on each part of the relationship in in this form. And also, like you have seen in the previous slide, there is a Cypher query at the top. Here is the Cypher query at the bottom next to buttons. So every tab is showing you a query which is generated, but what do you do? So this way you can also learn the Cypher query language, even if you are just clicking in the UI. That, that can really help to ease the transition for many people. If we edit the relationship, it's very similar. You also have the properties, you have the starting ending node. Uh, what is very specific for now for J maybe not that specific okay <laughs> they are also data types in that in other data but databases <laughs> so what was a little bit tricky i will say to implement was uh the properties types as you can see here we have two properties one integer type one is string based on that uh the the input is changed so Neo4j also offer a list as a property type. So the list also have specific type. You can have list of strings, list of integers. So it, I really had to implement this so it can really easily be changed or modified through UI. Uh, like I said, I also wanted some console for the advanced user. So you can click on the query button at the top right and we'll open the typical uh, text area where you can write your queries. The result of the query can be shown in uh, three different types, table, JSON, and graph. And also there is summary because each uh, query you run towards the database uh, generates a summary which will tell you some informations. So 
So for example, this is the uh, graph view of uh, the query in the console. Uh, it's very really uh, modifiable. Modifiable? Oh, you can easily modify <laughs> how it looks. <laughs> uh, just click on the labels or types on the right and you can choose uh, uh, the shape uh, of the node. You can change uh, which property, which key of properties is shown as a label. And last uh, feature I really like personally, it's a stash. It's uh, down here, as you can see here, the stash is closed. Uh, on this next slide, we can see the stash is open. And in this stash, you can add any node relationship or query. Uh, as you can see in one of previous slides, for example, here, at the bottom, uh, there are buttons execute, reload, close, delete. And between them, there is this folder with plus. It's the same here. So in many places where you are seeing a node or relationship, you can click on this button and the object is added to the stash. So you can easily access your favorite nodes or something. It's very practical if you are developing something and you are just modifying something specific and you change something in your application, you want to revert back the changes. So you can just open the Cypher GUI, click on your favorite node, change the status or something you changed with your app and just refresh your app and you are back where you have been. So it's really practical when I'm working on some specific feature and I don't want to go through the flow every time. I just want to go back with some few nodes so I easily access them through the stash. I also prepared <clears throat> some recordings so you can see uh, what I mean. Uh, this is the application I mentioned, which is for managing the employee rights. Um, I just switched the language in the beginning. And we can see the, uh, this is the right request for a right of an employee. And we can see the request is inactive. So it was not uh, managed yet. So the administrator who is right manager can go to the pending process and he can see the request is there and he can approve it. So he can confirm the right, uh, he's redirected back. And now the employee, if he looks, he can see his right was approved. So that means the node uh, status changed. But if I'm working on it and I'm developing some feature, I want to change this uh, status back. I want to put it back into inactive state. So I can go to the database and I have to find that specific, I have to find that specific uh, right request. So I will start with uh, looking at employees because I know I was working with employee myself in this case. Uh, so I know my ID is zero. I remember that. Then I will go to the rights where I see the right I was approving was named Farba, which is color in Slovak. <laughs> and I see the ID of the node Farba is 21. So I can click on this and I can see there is right request for this right color. And there is uh, there if if you click on the right request, we go. Sorry, we didn't click on the right request. Yes, we did. Let me check. Yes. So the right request is note, and we can see that the right request has multiple relationship. 
because with every change, there is also log what changed. So we can ignore the log uh, nodes. We can also ignore the fields because they are containing some specific values for that write. But we are interested in to write an employee. So we see this write request wasn't requested or created by the employee zero. There was different ID. But here we can see the other write request where the employee zero created this specific write request. So we know this is the right one. It's just uh, traversing the data and understanding the structure. But because I created the project, I know what I'm looking for. But for administrators, I created the uh, map of the graph structure so they can navigate through that and they can understand how the data are stored. So now I can just change the status of that of that uh, request. Uh, after I click execute, the tab closed. Uh, oh, sorry, my mistake. Now let's go back. What's going on? Something is wrong with my UI. If I move the video, I'm sorry, there is a mistake here. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Uh, when I clicked on execute, the tab closed. Uh, you can change that behavior in the settings, which is available in the corner. So after executing, the tab can stay open if you switch that on in the settings in upper right corner. Here I'm showing you how to use the stash, which is very simple. I just click on the, uh, I just clicked on that folder button and it immediately showed behavior on the stash. It was added, so we can check. So now when I will move further with this write request, I will change more stuff. Uh, I can easily access it back. And now if I refresh the website, I can see the write request is inactive again. So this way in development time, I can really easily work with the data and I don't have to use any SQL, as you can see. I just change the status of the write request without knowing anything about SQL. I just have to understand the graph structure, but that can be easily done with provided picture, like I mentioned. Uh, let me show you this other video. Uh, what I want to show you in this video is additional features of the CQL. When you see a query generated on the site, you can click on it. It's copied to clipboard. Anywhere you see this kind of SQL, you can copy it, which is very practical. Uh, there is also search if you are looking at the table with the notes. Uh, this search has two functionalities. It can, it can search in the properties, but if you enter number, sorry, it also search for ID of nodes. So if you looking for 11, it search for ID 11, but also it search for the property value with 11. So if we switch, switch uh, the search value for Michal, it, we can see in the generated query, it search only the property values, not ID anymore. 
So if you know the ID of node, you can easily find it with this search function. Uh, the table also has sorting. You can sort by uh, multiple columns at the same time. There is also a button where you can view that list of nodes as a query or table, uh, sorry, as a, as a graph. Uh, it opens the uh, query console where the query is put it and run it so you can see the graph view of that query. As I mentioned before, you can change how the node looks like. You can choose the label field. You can choose the shape, size, color. If you go on specific node or click on it, it will also show you properties of that node on the right side, which is a little bit different behavior than Neo4j browser. In Neo4j browser, if you search for nodes, uh, it automatically also add into graph visualization the relationship between them, even if you didn't search for them. Uh, in my tool, if you are not searching for the relationships, they are not shown in the graph. I do not run additional query to search the relationships. So I will show you, I will just add the relationship and then we will see the full structure of the data with the relationships. So it's a little bit different behavior than the Neo4j browser. And here we can see if I click on the node, it will show the properties and it will show typically the edit button, stash and label buttons. So you can click on any of these and you can immediately jump into this requested place. So as you can see, it's easy to navigate. Uh, the JSON view, I, I'm just showing you, there is a copy button here. Uh, this copy button is mostly available in any input field you can find in the Cypher GUI. So even, even if you are in the form of editing relationship, uh, there is a copy button in every field. And if I'm showing a relationship or label or note in this table view, it's always shown in the typical buttons you are used to in the whole UI. So if you search for specific label value, it will show you only the value. So I'm very happy about this tool because it simplified the way I work with the graph database when I'm developing something. So it's really something what can ease the transition from relational database for many people. And I hope you enjoyed this session. And if you have any questions, you can ask me, no problem. You can reach me out through the message. I have also some planned features because right now, if you have uh, constraints in your graph database, I, I'm not like looking up on them. So it's not really like protected for using. I don't have that much time to add this verification, but maybe in future, <laughs> hopefully. So I see there is no questions. Sarah is thank saying thanks for joining. Yes, thank you so much for joining. Uh, thanks for your attention. It was nice to be here again at Notes. Thank you, Neo4j, for doing this for everybody. And you can reach me out anywhere on these links. Have a nice day.